The panel later joining me now, former Biden surrogate Kevin Waller and radio host Tony Katz. Gentlemen, thank you all so much for joining me tonight. So, so you heard it from the people, the number one issues, the economy. Although, Tony, from, for the people that was on the left of the panel, you heard that social justice, reproductive justice, is, is the top issues for, for them. Uh, well, that's what they say, but that isn't what happens in the polling. That's not what's happening on the ground. We have talked here on this show for the past two months about these crime issues. And Kevin will tell you about all the money the Democratic Party has put into police and put into law enforcement. And yet, it's still the top issue because nobody feels it because it's not the story. The lax policies of prosecutors, the inability to actually go after criminals, the unwillingness to go after criminals, avoiding the subject altogether. Same thing is true with inflation. The president of the United States, Joe Biden, tells you that the economy is strong as hell. His words, not mine. But everybody lives in a different reality. That detachment of the Progressive Party, of the Democratic Party, is why you are seeing this unbelievable swing towards the Republicans in states all across the country. So uh, I got to go to you, Kevin, because there is some sort of swing. Does the po point that Tony makes, th does that resonate with you or do you think the swing is happening for, for a different reason? Yeah, I think, Lawrence, the point that, that uh, Tony made about the economy, I, I wrote a piece in, at Fox News Digital just this past week that Democrats need to focus on inflation and the economy and speak to the concerns that voters have every day uh, when they go to the, the uh, food store, when they fill up their mm -hmm. tanks, and talk about the good things that we're doing to address uh, those concerns, putting more money uh, in the hands of Americans when it comes to energy bills, mm -hmm. when it comes to prescription drug costs, because this election will be decided on the state of the economy, on the state of the job market and on the state of inflation. But we've got to listen to voters. You uh, you have been having these great panels, and I hope that every elected and every candidate is listening to them, whether it was the, the panel mm -hmm. last week in Milwaukee or this one uh, in Pennsylvania. Because again, if the candidates aren't listening to the voters, we're going to come up short, whether it be Republicans or Democrats. So true. It's about time that the politicians start listening to the American people. Tony, Amen. To Tony, well, you know, I brought up the Fetterman debate. And, right. you know, we all saw what took place there. But the one thing that I just can't go past is the, the concealment of his condition before the primary was over. And now we see what it is. It's not fair to the Democratic voters that they don't have a strong candidate. They're but upset. That's the call to the Democratic Party. If the Democratic Party hates the voter, how am I supposed to fix this problem? How are you? How are any of us? And we should be clear that it's hate. Senator Bob Casey said that Fetterman won that debate and he's going to be a great senator. Joe Biden said Fetterman is Pennsylvania. But Americans look at this and it seems to me that Pennsylvania's looking at it when you speak to people like radio host Chris DeGaulle in Philadelphia and, and others that the Fetterman family doesn't like John Fetterman. The Democratic Party doesn't like John Fetterman. The campaign doesn't like John Fetterman. They certainly don't give a good holy damn about his health at all. It is obscene what we saw in that debate with Dr. Oz. It's obscene that they are allowing him, who is a man who is not okay, which is fine, by the way. You don't have to be okay after a stroke. It's unbelievable that they're running him and still want to talk about the fact that he's okay. He's not okay. To say otherwise is a lie. Kevin, isn't that true, though? I mean, they're expecting this man to be Superman. I mean, it's just not going to happen. And it's very clear. I mean, it's one thing to disagree with the man's policies, which a lot of voters do. And some people support it. But he didn't even have a proper chance to defend himself because he can't communicate to the American people yet. Well, listen, Lawrence, we're watching the lieutenant governor recover from this stroke in the public eye. And that's a very difficult thing. But listen, I, I, I heard Kathy's voice in your panel uh, in, in Reading, Pennsylvania, where she said, I've met the lieutenant governor, governor many times. I know what he stands for. I know that he's an intelligent, intelligent man. He's on the road to recovery. He will be back to near 100 percent by the Prove time that. the new Senate is sworn in in January. And, and the voters will be, be the determining factor whether he goes to Washington. But they know this lieutenant governor. They don't know Dr. Oz. But Kevin, dear Adam, brother, just from she his, also, uh, TV she show also that he was hold on. on one second, because I think this is important for the audience to know. She also followed it up by saying she's going to be very upset if this is the reason, because she she believes she should have known about his health. And if this is the reason that he does not win, she's going to be upset. They lied to their voters. I, I just think they should have more respect for the voters. We, I, 
it is important that we have strong candidates and both political parties. And the fact that the party, once again, concealed that from the American people, I just think it's awful. Anyway, I'm out of time, gentlemen. I'll have y'all back next week.